Cowboys and their contract situations also was a big topic of discussion. John Machota of The Athletic, his latest piece, Dak Prescott, CeeDee Land, Trayvon Diggs, talk contracts while Michael Parson discusses adding weight. So the question we start off with on tonight's conversations, which Cowboys contract is most important to you to get done now? So let's set the table here. Trayvon Diggs is entering into a contract year. Mm -hmm. Of course, he was a second round pick, which means he has a four year deal. Final year of that deal. CeeDee Lamb is eligible for a contract extension. His fifth year option was already picked up going into 2024, where he'll make $18 million if he doesn't have a long term deal done by the time we get there. Micah Parsons is eligible for a contract extension at the end of this upcoming season. And one Rain Dakota Prescott can get a contract extension at any point because we are now a couple of years into his four-year, $160 million deal, and that cap number continues to go up, Stephen Jones. So I'll start off with you, Reg. Which Cowboys contract is most important for you to see get done right now based on who is available to have theirs done? Do you want to start the conversation, Toxic? Because we're going to start the conversation. Oh, please, toxic. please It's do. Dak Prescott. It's a quarterback, right? Like, the contract that he signed has it to where there's not a trade clause, right? Like, and there's he cannot be tagged. That's right. So once you get to the end of this, the cap number balloons up. That's a situation where all the conversations about, will you be able to build a team around him if he's taking up too much pie? You will be in that territory very soon if you do not rework something out to have him here longer. And I, look, I understand, again, this is the toxic part where we start doing the, is he the quarterback that you want running your, you know, at the helm of your team and all those things. I don't really feel inclined to have that conversation. And honestly, I don't feel like I have to because the Cowboys don't seem inclined on having that conversation. If that's the way that it is, go ahead and sign that up, stretch that out. And what is the thing that we always say about quarterback contracts sooner rather than later? Just go ahead and get that done because this thing is a revolving door and the next person up is just going to step up to the window and cast their check. So go ahead and get that done and figure this out so you do not get closer and closer to cap hell because the last time you did this, and please don't do this like the last time you do this. Oh, my God. We were all sick of having to have that conversation. Save us all <laughs> the misery of this. But the last time you did this, the longer you wait, it just meant more money that you had to pay. Get it done so that we don't have to keep worrying about that. Dak, what about your contract? How locked in are you when it comes to your next contract? More in tune? Yeah. No, probably less in tune than ever, really, to be honest with you. Uh, y'all have known me and y'all know every offseason for me to go in there and get better as best as I can. And that's uh, that's tough that I leave to the Cowboys and, and I leave to my agent. Uh, they, they got it done years ago, and when it's time to get it done again, I, I trust in both of them. And um, as Stephen has said, it might happen overnight. Who knows, right? But uh, that's not any of my concerns or my thought process. Dak Prescott sounds like a man who's worried about what he needs to take care of on the field and let Todd France, his high-powered agent, be able to handle things off the field when it comes to those negotiations, which I say is good advice. Right. Todd France has already shown his receipts. Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> plenty of them. Yeah. Uh, from the 214, theirs is CD. CD has been showing upper trajectory. Then Micah Parsons, Trayvon Diggs, nod to Dak. From the 940, I know this sounds crazy and most will not agree, but for me... It's Terrence Steele. Now, that's an interesting one because he had his tender signed, and now he's going to be, after this year, if a deal is not done, an unrestricted free agent as well. Tyron Smith, also in the final year of his contract, is up at the end of this year as well. I like where the 940 is going, given the fact that we've talked a lot about the depth on this offensive line yep. and Terrence Steele going into a contract year where most dudes in contract years normally ball out Terrence Steele has a chance coming off the torn ACL to do that himself going into this upcoming season. Absolutely understand that, especially because you are three, four seasons removed from having the unquestionable best offensive line in the league, and you saw the benefits of having that level of mm -hmm. offensive line, and I hate to be the dude who is a broken record, but sm smarter football people than me that talk about football say that in its essence, it is about blocking and tackling. Yeah. And so making sure All about that, the trenches. Uh, making sure that you have that um, in the right ways is something that is very important. I completely agree with that. Um, now that we got the quarterback conversation out of the way, because again, I understand nobody wants to have that conversation. I don't want to have that conversation. It's not any fun. Um, <laughs> the one that's most important is the dude who was damn near defensive player of the year. Okay, so I, I see where you're going there with that one. For me, that to, that's the one I'm not as concerned about is because that's when that was really easy. Okay, so that that was the way that I took the CD one. So both of those mm. ones are really easy. I would agree with that. I think for Micah Parsons, that's easy. That's a blank check. 
CeeDee Lamb, assessing value, obviously having his best year this past year, second team all pro, being able to establish where his value is relative to the other top 10 receivers in the league should be fairly low complex for the Cowboys to get done. For me, though... We're about to get to that place, aren't we? Yeah, I'm going to go with Trayvon Diggs yeah, on, this buddy. Kind of, on this one. Yeah, buddy. Because here's what bothers me. If the Cowboys decide to walk away from this player after they lamented the fact that Byron Jones, who at one point was an all-pro as a Dallas Cowboy, people tend to forget that, was an all-pro at one point, but of course did not intercept the football the way that they wanted him to, mm -hmm. Cowboys also felt like, hey, he's not giving us enough turnovers to command the kind of salary that he eventually got from Miami, where Miami's now looking around like, hmm, I don't know if we should have gave him that money either. But <laughs> Trayvon does the thing that the Cowboys want their corners to do. That's break up passes and, more importantly, create turnovers. Since he's come into the league in 2020, no one has intercepted the ball more and no one has more pass breakups than Trayvon Diggs. That, to me, in a passing league where you look at this secondary with J. Ron Curse, Malik Hooker, Donovan Wilson now back in the fold. You got Stephon Gilmore to pair alongside Trayvon Diggs, not only pass off wisdom, but create balance in that secondary. Trayvon Diggs, to me, is the most important one because I think the Dak Prescott contract, while it may be a little complicated, that should be fairly easy to get done. Micah and CD should be fairly layups for them. Trayvon, for me, is the most important one that needs to get done based on what they've told me they believe their corner should be doing and the fact that you didn't pay the one who was really good but didn't necessarily intercept the football. Trayvon, he needs to get paid. Wait, so Kevin, you're telling me that sometimes organizations, particularly NFL organizations, don't always hold true to their supposed tenets? Mm. Huh. How about that? Well, that's interesting. No, How about the, that? The tough thing about it for, is you're right. Like all, all of the history would say that this is the way that they'd be inclined to do it. I also look at the factors that we're talking about. How many of these major level contracts did we just talk about are going to be e easy and layups and things that you imagine that they view as must-dos, right? Quarterback, uh, defensive end, or defensive stalwart, you know, if we don't want to put labels on it, and Michael Parsons, uh, number one wide receiver in CeeDee Lamb. You have all of that thing, and we've heard the mantra and the talking point of pie. Now what happens when that conversation comes to Trayvon Diggs, who, let uh, the way that I view it, and tell me if you view this differently, does not seem inclined to be like, I am going to play ball with you guys. I am going to be um, hometown discount, even though this isn't his home, and I hate that saying. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, I don't know that he's going to be inclined to, like, make this easy on you, and I don't know that the Cowboys are in the place where they have him as their highest priority to make it easier for them to make this negotiation. So while I get what you're saying, that should be where their value is, I also think that you look at the way that this stacks up on the roster, and his level of priority for getting a deal done with the number that he wants and their level of priority for getting a deal done with the number that he wants aren't, I don't think are going to match up. Yeah, and I think that may be a little bit more difficult of a negotiation to get done. But you, what you don't want to do is to go into 2024 talking about tagging your top five corner yeah. at that kind of a salary. It would behoove the Cowboys to get a deal done with him rather than going into a year where he goes into unfettered free agency and allows the market to dictate what exactly he could get or risk having to tag him in order to keep him at a top five salary rather than getting a deal done. It just makes the most sense to me. And I know people will say, Kevin, Cowboys don't typically pay their corners. They got so scared off from paying Brandon Carr yeah. a decade ago that they don't hardly do it anymore. But if you're not going to pay this corner, which one are you going to pay? at that particular point, or are you going to continue to take the risk of trying to find corners on the cheap in the draft, and Will McClay we trust, versus actually trusting the dude and then paying him based on what he was actually able to do in a uniform based off the expectations you have for your corner. Yeah, this is on the truckwreck.com text line. Remember, you can always text in and get involved with the program, 877-881-1053. This comes from the 469. Which of those four is most dispensable? And the four, that, again, just to re refresh your memory, Dak Prescott, Micah Parsons, CeeDee Lamb, Trayvon Diggs. They, their vote goes to Diggs. And I wonder if the Cowboys view this the same um, because you were talking about the idea of, you know, where they do not value and historically. Haven't we talked about recently how it seems like their their value structure has been shifting? They just took a defensive tackle first uh, in, in the first round, right? That eventually has to shift somewhere. And I wonder if cornerback is the place where you're, you need to have the perfect prospect or whatever in order to feel like you're going to dump money into that place. And somebody else on the truckwreck.com text line, the 530 mentions Trayvon Diggs 
um, the physicality or the lack thereof, again, there's going to be knocks that you can put on any player. The, pro the, the, the thing that you have to consider is how much do, does that particular absence or you know lack matter to you and i wonder if for the cowboys they look at trayvon diggs and they're like we love that he gets his hand on the football we love the pass breakups the interceptions that particularly that you got in the rookie season however as a full as a full article as a full garment this isn't what we want to do at the highest level considering all of the other obligations that we have contract wise all of that sounds like um carrying water for the cowboys and i'm not trying to do that i just wonder if that's the way that this ends up playing because we've already had smarter minds than mine at least um when it comes to the way that these deals go say look for the trayvon Diggs situation that might not be as easy to make happen as you think it will be yeah and i guess the way that i look at my corners look he's never going to be you know the prototypical, or excuse me, he's not going to be one that engages in a lot of tackling. People will look at the, what happened in the San Francisco 49er playoff game and what happened there. I don't pay my corners to tackle. If my corners are out here making a bunch of tackles, we've got a real problem. At least in my mind, the way I view corner, especially in today's NFL, with the amount of array of passing offenses that we see, I pay my corners to cover and take away the football. And Trayvon Diggs has been literally the best at that since he got into the league. I'll pay for that value. And he showed me enough against Cincinnati, against the Giants at times last year, that he is willing to tackle and bring some of that physicality, maybe not to the degree that a lot of people may want to see more of him from, but he's enough of a willing tackler that I'll take the chance on it and allow him to be the guy that takes away the football and breaks up passes for me on a consistent basis. Okay, so this here at the end, because it does seem like you have a high value uh, on Trayvon Diggs, and I think rightfully so, right? Like we've seen the things that he does well and those things he does pretty extraordinary um from the 903 they say that they take digs over lamb and we we mentioned C uh cd lamb as mm. well as michael parsons in that place of that's going to get done easily and we understand you know you had the year where you had alan hearns out here or the you know one by committee, by committee whatever right. all that yeah um so recently you've seen the ways that you know things have influenced the cowboys to value that high level wide receiver but also we've seen in the NFL of late wide receiver being something that's a little bit more common. Would would you then agree maybe or have some openness to the idea that Trayvon Diggs uh, has a priority over the CeeDee Lamb? Of course, ignoring what we what we kind of think we know sure. and the kind of the tone that CeeDee Lamb took mm -hmm. yesterday at the uh, Home Run Derby. Yeah, I think based on what you're talking about with the amount of teams that are using two, three, and four wide receivers – your ability to have premium corners and good corners to supplement around your top two is vital in today's NFL. So I could see the point where the 903 is going about taking digs over Lamb, just given the positional value relative to how offenses are operating with three and four wide receiver sets. You've got to have at least two good corners to be able to handle business and then obviously dealing with slot corners that can handle things within the inside. But yeah, I get it. But CeeDee Lamb... Yeah, second team all pro. He should be able to have a layup on that contract. And that should get done relatively easy. But those are some of the things you start thinking about the team building going into not just this summer, but going into next year as well that you have to keep in mind, given the big ticket items that are coming. The Cowboys talking a lot about that last night during their celebrity home run derby.